And a very warm welcome. You're in tune to The Art of Living on Cross Rhythms 96.3 FM, Community Radio for Plymouth. And it's my joy with The Art of Living to have a fireside chat with those men and women who have played a significant role in churches or Christian organizations. A young couple who've been around uh, a few years, and uh, actually they had a lot of a lot to do in Plymouth, where we record the shows in the early uh, years. Uh, Noel and Tricia Richards, good to have you with us, guys. Good to be with you. Thank you. Great to have you with us. And um, we're also um, not only just doing radio now, but we've sort of progressed to doing vodcasts as well. So there's a bit of uh, f- uh, filming going on as well. But like I normally ask uh, our guests when when um, we introduce them this program, tell us a little bit of how you both came to faith. Because you've been married how many years? Yeah. Uh, uh, so putting you on the spot. 45, I think it is. Yeah, 45. How many? 45, 45 years. years. Wow. There you go. And still going strong. Yeah. yeah. I love the <laughs> cover of himself. your your music with with when you both that was 45 years ago wasn't it? Yeah, yeah we we've been yeah, writing for, all this for time. For longer than that. Yeah. I think we that was how we got together was through the writing of songs. So And you're well known for your musicianship and you're doing poetry as well Trisha but you've been on the Christian music worship scene for decades but anyway let's get back tell us your tell us your story about faith well for me I actually um I'm a Plymouth girl born in Plymouth and uh, my my maiden name was Trithowan so my heritage is Cornish even and uh, I was brought up in a with very loving parents brothers and sisters my mother went to the Methodist church and I would go to Sunday school. But my father was not a believer at all, so there was no pressure. Uh, I think I always had an awareness of God. I was curious and I enjoyed the singing in the church, so I would go to sing the hymns. I was actually asked to leave the choir because I sang too loud and I didn't understand musicality and sang harmonies when there weren't any. But um My faith really was sort of simmering. And when I was in junior school, uh, one of my lovely teachers ran a good news club after school and would have people come and give their testimonies. And uh, I went along and so would hear people talking about their faith in Jesus and their stories. And um, it was also at the time when various musicals were coming along, come together was also coming onto the scene. Well, I made a commitment to Christ at one of those meetings. And, um, but, you know, it was, uh, there was also, I think it was Power for Life. There were, there was quite a lot going on in Plymouth at that time. And I would sort of tip up at all these events. Um, And eventually found myself with a group of young Christian friends who, like myself, were born again and hungry for that connection and faith. And, it really sort of went on from there until we all became involved in a youth church on Plymouth Barbican. Yeah, and uh, we got some friends that we were with yesterday who uh, remember those days. What about yourself, No. Yeah, well, mine was completely different. Growing up in South Wales, uh, in a very, I would say, religious uh, community, Um, most of the villages in South Wales had a sort of Pentecostal chapel uh, of sorts. And and so my background was an Assemblies of God Pentecostal church, very legalistic uh, and and very superstitious. And um, I'm really glad that I left all of that. But good parents. Mm -hmm. Uh, My mum actually is still alive. She will be 93 in September. Uh, But wonderful parents who put a lot of good stuff into me. And uh, and so I had an awareness of God, you know, from an early age. Uh, But it was when I was 15 that that was the turning point for me when we had a a young guy come to be the pastor of our church. Uh, His name is John Glass. And uh, he went on to lead the Elam Pentecostal movement. And he became my mentor, really. And I owe so much to him because he basically discipled me mm. and, uh, you know, encouraged me in music because uh, he was a guitar player himself. And I think that was a turning point for me. I realized that here was somebody who had life. This wasn't mm. legalism. And, and so 
15 really was a turning point for me when I, I guess I really started on my journey um, as a real uh, follower of Christ, uh, not just, you know, doing the church thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm grateful for all of that. Uh, I went to my first Christian concert. Uh, John Glass took me to that, and that changed my life forever. He was great, John Glass, because I think he, at the time, um, the, the dealings Kerry and I had with him, he he was deeply relational, and that's where he wanted to take oh. Elam at the time into relationship. But we're going to be back with Noel and Tricia right after this. And if you've just uh, tuned in, uh, a very warm welcome to The Art of Living on Cross Rhythms. That song that you're listening to is a new project that uh, Noel and Tricia have uh, produced. It's called Still Dreaming. And we're going to through the program, obviously, with the the amazing amount of music that um, Noel and Tricia produced over the years, be filling in on this program all Noel and Tricia uh, Richard song. So we start with that. Still dreaming. Inspiration, guys? Well, I think uh, we've got to a certain age uh, when there's um, less years in front of us than there are behind us, but that is still important to keep moving forward, keep looking forward. And a lot of people think because we live in Spain, we've retired but you never retire from being creative or dreaming or still hoping. And uh, I think that, that that's part of the inspiration behind it. And knowing that life can still surprise you, you can still keep looking forward and uh, events and circumstances can change and that can be good. Yeah, and uh, you know, we, we address the kind of idea in the song that you know we were young, we had lots of great ideas, we had ambition, we had hopes for the future, and and then you know we we ask the question, where does the passion go? Yeah, because you know as we get older and we take the knocks in life, then we can become discouraged. Mm. Uh, our circumstances can become a bit of a straitjacket to stop us from dreaming, to stop yeah. us from expecting something. Uh, wonderful that can happen in the future so you know we just really want to encourage um people of our own age uh just to keep looking forward and uh yes we're grateful for the past but there is more to come and a friend of ours says there's always time for one more adventure <laughs> and uh, no matter what age you are uh, oh. let's keep looking for those adventures i love reading obituaries about people who have uh, had some interesting lives. Yeah. It's fascinating when you th you think what people have done and the circumstances and there's just the chance meetings uh, that have changed people's lives. So we just want people to keep expecting that, yeah, we can keep moving forward and we can still, the best is yet to come. That's what I mm. believe. Well, even when we pop our clogs, that's what we do hope, isn't it? The best is yet yeah. to come. But uh, Friends on Adventure, Bilbo Baggins, Lord of the Rings, it's kind of that artistic, creative stuff. I know that you're into poetry, Tricia, but in many ways, guys, we kind of started out, I mean, when we look back at the 80s, late 70s, 80s, the Jesus People Movement, it was a profound revival in the Western world that if the contemporary Christian music, worship music, this really was the genesis of your ministry for decades, weren't you? Worship leading, and you've done stadiums. We know yeah. uh, Noel in the past in Europe and stuff. But the heart of um, the heart of creativity, art, and um, that Jesus people movement was, was that, did you feel it was a, you were part of a revival back then? Um, we didn't use the revival word. No. I think, yes, there were a lot less sort of catchphrases then. We just felt, I, know, I remember becoming a Christian, you know, discovering Jesus, waking up every day, hungry to read the Bible, hungry to learn, just excited to be with a group of people who had also discovered faith um i i think it was yeah just a 
different. There wasn't the revival word. It was just like we thought, oh, we're going to be the generation that sees Jesus return. (laughs) Definitely, that was uh, much more in our thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, I I think... um, we we watched recently we watched yeah. the Jesus Revolution movie and uh we had the, the opportunity to, to see it and I I love the 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 idea you know all these young people who basically are saying you know we're going to be different yeah. we're going to change the world yeah um and we know that so many lives were changed during those late sixties mm. early seventies and and in Plymouth we did have some of those Calvary Chapel groups yes visit uh, come across and do concerts in the YMCA yeah uh, is the YMCA still there Chris? yeah it's still going it's still yeah, going. yeah and- absolutely. Those were fantastic concerts with some of those guys. But I I do remember uh, a few years later saying to somebody, I'd love to go to Calvary Chapel and see what's happening there. And basically, it all changed. They'd they'd settled down. Mm. They they got married, they'd had kids, they got mortgages. (laughs) And the revolutionaries were no longer revolutionaries. And and that's not a criticism at all. No. Uh, That's the stuff of life. But it was just great to see the movie and to think, oh, yeah, we were... We were young. We were carefree. We were wild. Yes, we were yeah. pretty wild down in Plymouth back in yeah. those days. At you, the you were. I'm going to allude to that later on. But it, yeah. it's how do you? How do you? You know, you might be in your 70s. One is in the 70s, but in faith can give you a sense you're still 18. Yes. Kind of yeah. internal, yeah. isn't it? Really, and I think you guys carry that as a sense, like you, the outward sort of gets a little bit older in time. But for the yeah. eternal perspective, I'm still 18. We'll be back with Noel and Trisha right after this. As the last sun sets for me, and the hush of the endless night consumes, it really will be fine. Know that I will be at peace. And everything that you and I have shared is wrapped up in the past. And this is, of course, the Art of Living on Cross Rhythms, uh, 96.3 FM. Certainly hope I'm naming the program correctly. As I get older, I forget what I'm doing sometimes. But I do know I'm in the studio, Fireside Chat, with uh, Noel and Tricia Richards, who have been around... A long, long time, as they said, they've admitted it, 45 years of marriage. That's pretty, pretty wonderful. Uh, They got married very young. (laughs) (laughs) You were both in the Bethel Church in the late 70s, 80s. Um, I think Alec McLeod was a real um, leader in that movement, architects, design group, students and people finding faith and really exciting time. Um, Was that really the genesis of what you were thinking musically, No. Um, Well, in those days, (laughs) you know, we thought if we could basically just do concerts, we'd be very happy. I think our ambition in those days was maybe one day we could play at the Royal Albert Hall mm-hmm. and then we will have really made it as as musicians and singers because, you know, there were uh, some Christian events happening in the Royal Albert Hall and we thought if we could, oh, one day be involved in something like that, that would be fantastic. We never dreamed that our music would take us to so many different countries and playing not just in the Royal Albert Hall but, you know, stadiums, and on television, you know, to tens of thousands of people. And it's just amazing. We could never have imagined that. Um, I, we were very happy in Plymouth, Trish, weren't yes, we? Yeah. we loved Plymouth. Yeah. Imagined we'd stay there all our lives. And um, and I think, actually, what we've often said is you became an ac- we became accidental worship leaders because that phrase didn't even exist, hmm. worship leader. We were just the people with guitars who, yeah. who liked to sing. And so But but back then you'd remember this probably, Trish, because you know, Methodist, the, the the pun was that it'll take um every year you move the the, the piano an inch across an the, inch. the you know. <laughs> but the whole thing about the Jesus people movement with us with contemporary Christian music was it was contemporary music that the church yes. was getting into using percussion, guitars and stuff. It's a bit of a culture shock, wasn't it? 
Yeah, and uh, we basically, because we were starting from scratch, you know, we basically had a small band leading worship because Trish played guitar, I played guitar. We had... I think everybody played the guitar. <laughs> so, you know, we'd have this huge tune-up of 12 guitars before yeah. we started because everybody was included. Everybody yeah. was involved. It was Yeah, and it, it was... Um... It was pretty organic. Mm. You know, we we weren't trying to um, make something happen. Um, I do remember uh, being at a youth conference at a place called Kelly College mm. in, yep. Tavistock. in Tavistock. Yep. And there was a guy called Bob Pitcher who was yep. leading from the piano. Yeah. And we all stood around with our guitars. Yeah. Yep. And I think there was a song that was going around at that time. I'm not sure where it came from. It was called Sing and Rejoice, O Daughter of Zion. I mean, really archaic language. But we sang that song to death over the weekend. Yeah. And we just all stood around this grand piano with Bob singing at the top of his voice. <laughs> um, but it wasn't about lights and smoke machines and uh, set lists and all of that. And the thing is, there is a place for all of that. So that's yeah. not a criticism. I think it's great that we can be creative. If you look at the Old Testament, they definitely had smoke machines with all the incense and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And they dressed in their stage clothes, their fine robes. But in those days, it was very... It was very um, very hit and miss, <laughs> yeah. and it was fun. And uh, I think we we mustn't lose that sense mm -hmm. of adventure when we come together to worship. Yeah. So as a couple, married, family, everything else, how important has your ministry together been? Because you do a lot of poetry, Tricia, that you yeah. do a lot of singing. You with it, you know, written a few of the songs yourself, haven't you? Yes. And and the funny thing is, is that I I guess. I don't, um, we never sort of separated it like I was writing poetry. I think naturally Noel has always been the more um, competent musician and also he he comes up with the hook lines musically. But I'd often go, oh, I've got some words for that. So a lot of the poems, I think a classic would be By Your Side. Um, that, you know, that was a, that started life as a poem. Um, words that I'd written, and I can remember Noel playing this, this you know, hook music and thinking, ah, oh, I've got that. And then we'd come together and we'd hone it. So mm -hmm. some poems have gone the way to become songs. Yeah. Um, but yes, I've always written. I think that's always been jotting yeah. words down. Um, I've got to say, Tristan, that we, we know Steve Wheeler, who Kerry mentions in yes. Got a Guy to Live, with Mark too, he was quite a revolutionary at the time in terms. But he's doing a massive ministry on poetry oh, right. Uh, right now. It's absolutely amazing, and uh, he's never lost that creative zeal. No. No. I mean, he went into academia, but he's uh, he's still like Mark II, fronting yeah. type of the music. And there's something I don't know whether it's a deposit that God gave, but mm. uh, there's a lot of people um, with our um, uh, length of time on the planet who are still quite vibrantly young out of that season. When we stop uh, for some more music now and come back, let's let, let let me ask you what you what you see spiritually, prophetically for the times that we're in and and your ministry and what you're endeavouring to do. We'll be back right after this. Ooh, and stay. And this is the Art of Living on Cross Rhythms 96.3 FM. Fireside chat with Noel and Tricia Richards. Um, actually, a really well-known name, Richards, in terms of contemporary music and everything else. And in Plymouth, obviously, homegrown. A lot of history in Plymouth for uh, Noel and Tricia. But guys, your inspiration for 45-plus years... You get married 45 years ago and you're still doing the same thing. Inspiration. What do you see? You've got to have a vision to keep going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, somebody, a, a good friend of ours uh, said a few years ago that maybe, you know, we've been writing hymns for the church for so long uh, that maybe now we need to write uh, hymns for people, whether they're inside the church or outside the church. People on a journey. Yeah. Of belief. 
so I, I look at some of the, you know, some of the songs that 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 uh, mainstream songs. Um, I remember years ago watching a video of Robbie Williams at Nebworth mm. and singing his song Angels. And I think it was well over 150,000 people there. Incredible. And they're all singing at the tops of their voices. It it was like it, it was a hymn. And, and then I, I think of Freddie Mercury at Wembley Stadium singing We Are the Champions and 70,000 people singing that, you know, We Are the Champions. That was a hymn for that generation. And and so for me, I'm thinking if we can continue to write songs that maybe will be hymns that that people can sing, whether they have faith or don't have faith, but songs that are shot through with our faith, mm. uh, then that's what we'll continue to do. So we're looking, you know, for an audience, if you like, uh, people who listen not just inside the church, but people outside the church as well. So that's affecting our writing and affecting uh, the way we look at things. And you, you travel, you travel the world with your ministry, especially to the states and Europe. And you do work in Eastern Europe. So, yeah. what I mean, you can have big concerts, little concerts, doesn't matter, does it? It's really no. It does doesn't matter at all, to be honest with you. We I, I always joke that we've played everything from couches to cathedrals. Sofas to stadiums. Sofas to stadiums. They're the stadium. good song, Tricia. From <laughs> couches to cathedrals or cathedrals to couches. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, whether it's a handful of people in a, in a front room, mm. which is where we started off, and where we've actually done some concerts in recent years. Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's fantastic. I mean, I love those front room concerts. Uh, so we were doing a lot of those before the pandemic hit. We were doing house concerts. Uh, and they were great. We really enjoyed doing those. But also, it's just a wonderful privilege to to play in front of tens of thousands, as mm -hmm. I was able to do last summer in in Hungary, uh, when our good friend Victor, uh, who leads a, a, a movement there called This Is The Day, uh, finally was able to fill uh, the national stadium with 40,000 people from around Central Europe. It was just an yeah. incredible day. And just a privilege just to go up there and sing for 20 minutes uh, within that program. Yeah. Do you see um, things bubbling uh, over the years across the world? I mean, these are, for every generation, if you were in the 30s or even in the 60s, you know, the, the world goes through uh, incredible times of stress and, and you know, ebbs and flows. What do you see at the moment for a, a next generation? What are, do you think people are asking existential questions? Why am I here? What's it all about? I think in most people's lives, you know, people at inside with faith, without faith, at some point in their lives, they usually ask those sort of questions. Um, and I think, you know, to be a part of their conversations is a, is a privilege and an opportunity. A lot of people, you know, that we've met since we moved to Spain um, are are interested in God and a lot of people aren't interested in God. They've sort of blocked God off in their sort of parents' uh, religion. Um, so they're like, well, we're not interested. We don't want to be part of um, predominantly a church. Um, end of discussion. But around the dinner table, when you, you know, they might say, well, so you write modern hymns, you know, and you're like, yes, well, what do you, you know, and, and discussions come up about God. And I think that there's much more opportunity for that. Um, it's, a, it's a real mix, I think. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to think, Chris, that we, we are, you know, becoming more open in the way that we think and approach mm -hmm. different groups of people. I, I mean, we it was interesting for us when we uh, moved here, some of our neighbours, because we live in an apartment block, uh, some of our neighbours live for a few years and then they move on. We had uh, a young Muslim couple living next door to us. He was playing for the local football team, a professional footballer. And uh, we became really good friends with them. Uh, and yet, you know, previous years living in the UK, we'd always see Islam as the enemy of our faith. And yet here we were sitting uh, around the pool, Trisha Times, just saying, well, tell me, you know, what do you believe? And tell me what your perspective is. Because mm -hmm. I think if we dialogue and if we ask questions, 
uh, then we will we'll find maybe some sort of common ground. I, I remember years ago being in a, a concert in Germany, a, a small concert in an optician's. They were celebrating, uh, I think, 10 or 15 years of being in the local community. <laughs> and so we did a small acoustic concert there. And I talked to a young guy all evening. And at the end of the evening, he said, well, no, it's been great to meet you. And, you know, I'm a Muslim. You're a Christian. We both follow the same God, just different paths. And with that, he turned around and walked out the door. Yeah. And I, 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 I was like just about to say, well, actually, I believe. <laughs> and I thought, no, yeah. if he's got a heart after God, yeah. the Bible yeah. says, if you seek me, you will find me. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and then we had another neighbor who was, you know, we were joking. He's, he's totally into the new age. But he said, always, he said, I'm not a Buddhist. No, I'm just I'm just a thinker and yeah. a very skillful surgeon, orthopedic yeah. surgeon. And we had wonderful conversations with mm. him yeah. about, you know, spiritual matters. Yeah. And that was quite an eye opener for us because we suddenly found, oh, we're people on a journey. And if we've got a heart that's open to God, we will find God. These people will find God. And, and so the sensitivity. People are seeking. A sensitivity, as you're saying there, Noel, that um, that Christ would have heard and seen in the spirit. It's it's mm -hmm. God that does the conversion, isn't it? Yes, we're it just conduits. Been the work of the Holy spirit. Yeah, yeah. Because yes. you can you can talk and you could convince someone yeah. to believe what you believe, but unless there is that work of the Holy Spirit, yeah. that heart change, yeah. it'll just go the way of all other things and it'll be something you were into. Yeah. We're going to stop for some more music and we'll be back with Noel and Tricia right after this. With you while you cry No reason to tell me And if you've just tuned in, this is The Art of Living on Cross Rhythms 96.3 FM. Fireside chat with a young couple, Noel and Tricia Richards, been around, certainly birthed in Plymouth in the early days, back in the late 70s and 80s, still as young as ever. And guys, you've been on the music scene for years and poetry and the creative arts and stuff, but you're also doing a podcast, Noel, yeah. with a bit of humor in it. Yeah, that's right. I, I just had this idea of uh, a podcast, which I've entitled Confessions of a Worship Leader, because I realized in, in all these years, 40 plus years of traveling around the UK, Europe and further afield, uh, I've probably been in some very interesting, humorous situations. <laughs> uh, so the idea was to basically do something that would make people smile. Uh, some of the daft things that that I've encountered uh, in all my travels, uh, some of the funny things that I've done as well, maybe slightly irreverent things I've done over the years, but also to to look at some of the things that, that we believe in and, and maybe examine those things. Uh, I, my first one was, you know, I stopped going to church. That was my first podcast. Uh, which is like shock horror. What does what's Noel going to say about this? And then I explained that basically, you know, we we don't go to church. We are the church. And if if we see a meeting as being church, then we're missing the point. Uh, that church is community. Church is shared life. Uh, churches we're involved with one another. We're caring for one another, discipling one another. So I expand it. But you know, it's it's that kind of idea taking uh, some of the things uh, that we have and and examining them. Uh, looking at things like, you know, when is Jesus coming back? You know, because people talk about all of that. But just examining that from a a non-religious mm. uh, point of view, maybe slaying a few sacred cows along the way, and uh, and that was the idea, really. And there's a sense of freedom, isn't it? I mean, as you get um, on in age, I don't know for Kerry and I, uh, like we said before, it's not the physical age. It's the good news of the gospel is there is a freedom. Mm. Yeah, there is a peace. There is a sense that only God can give you a, a, a value, an identity, and it actually does get better, but it doesn't automatically mean that the circumstances get better. Yeah. This no. is the essence of the faith, because when you think of the, you know, brothers and sisters in the persecuted church, like Iran or, you know, North Korea, et cetera, mm -hmm. they've got such an intimacy with God that despite mm -hmm. the difficulties, they're still, they're still there. 
Yeah, and 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 I think they are in a situation where they experience a church life that's very different to our own in the, in the non-persecuted world. And I, and I found as as I was doing these initial podcasts that I was getting some feedback from people that are in a similar situation to ourselves. They they've been in a church community all their lives, but they suddenly realize this is not working. Mm. Uh, we need much more than this. Mm. You know, they they don't want to be in a system. Uh, they don't want to no longer they don't want to tick that box anymore. They actually want something that's living, that's that's vibrant. And that is um, probably more relational. Yes, yeah. and sort I, of help one another with the like you were saying, Chris, with the realities of life. I mean, bad stuff happens to good people. Mm. Um, one of the poems I wrote um in the last couple of years, um, it starts off with Where is God when the lightning strikes? Because lightning strikes mm, in life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have family members who have, you know, suffered bereavement and great illness, uh, whose life plans have not gone accordingly. And I think we have we are looking to sort of write songs, write poems that will help people realize that we're all we're all just walking with a limp. Yeah. Brennan Manning's great. Yeah. Brennan Great. Manning, yeah, the ragamuffin yeah, gospel, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He was absolutely, very absolutely. open about his alcoholism. Yep. He was yep. always an alcoholic. Yeah, um, that was something he wasn't healed from. No. No. Um, and was a, a great stress to him. But yep. you know, the whole thing of you know, it's very current, isn't it? Mental mental health. Yep. Um, and we've we've looked at some of those things. Um, one of our songs, "Quiet My Soul." That talks of really addresses that you know cries out to God mm. you know speak to me help me um, yeah. so those yeah and just the... you reminded me when you were just saying that Trish about Brennan Manning but uh, also another guy that was uh, to me is was a legend is a guy called George Verwa mm. yeah who yeah. founded this global organization called Operation Mobilization. Yeah, and uh, I, I I always kept in touch with George over the years. I did the the Love Europe events, and it's funny there were times when I'd meet George in an airport lounge. He was yeah. on his way somewhere, and I was yeah. going somewhere else. Yeah, and the last time we were physically together was actually in a church, a large church in Toronto, in Canada, yeah. several yeah. years ago. And I was shocked when he stood up in front of this crowd of people, uh, preaching, and said, "Well, as you all know, I've always struggled with lust," and and I thought. George, you know, um, that is quite honest, but I love the fact honest. that he was honest. It was truth, wasn't it? It yeah. was truth. And um, I, 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 just before he died, he just died a few weeks ago. And I remember getting his newsletter and he just said, hey, don't pray for me to get healed. Just pray that it won't be too painful because I know yeah. where I'm going. I've lived yeah. a good age and I'm ready to go. And I just yeah. I love guys like that. The reality yeah. 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 Um, so a true legend. Well, listen, I want to get people, especially with Social Media Day, to be able to connect with you um, and uh, your music. And so we're going to stop and have another um, track from uh, Noel and Trish. But we'll be back with the final part of uh, this week's program right after this. What a blessedness. What a peace is mine. The final part of The Art of Living with uh, Noel and Tricia Richards on uh, The Art of Living. And guys, lovely to shoot the breeze with you. Just um, it is a fireside chat. You never really know where it's going. <laughs> and um, But how can people connect your podcast and your website, Noel? And um, um, obviously... We've we've got to get to the point where we can put this up on screen for the yes. podcast we do, but we're not really there yet. We're still getting <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the team. Uh, I've got we've got too much to do, and the team's a bit small. So, but anyway, so website. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, um, I've got my own website, which is noelrichards.com, uh, which really, you know, looks at the, I suppose, the legacy of what we've done over the years, our songs, our various concerts and things like that. So that's very simple, noelrichards.com. And then we've got our own website, uh, which you can access with two addresses, actually. There's noelandtricia.com. And that's, Trisha, T-R-I-C-I-A. Yeah, T-R-I-C-I-A, noelandtricia.com. Or uh, another uh, link that we have, it's called the emigres dot com will take you to the same website and that that gives you uh, all the latest stuff that we've been doing uh songs about yep. life love and spirituality i would imagine no trisha that if you um go on one link it leads mm. you to the other because i'm sitting on from media thing i think well you know noel richards.com that's it you'll get all the rest presumably yeah, there's a, you, there's a, there's cross pollinization. It's a cross poly, yeah, whatever it is, cross whatever it is, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you the simple is go to noelrichards.com and you can find everything there. And you know we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Uh, Lovely. So just do a search of the names and you'll find us. Well, guys, it's been a real joy to just shoot the breeze with you, and thank you for giving your time. Everything else, thank um, you. We'll pray that um, you just continue to expand in the fruitfulness and influence of the ministry. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much indeed. God bless. Thank you.